Going to Leeds University changed my life. There's no question of that. In October 1978, I went there ostensibly to study politics. But the main reason I went to Leeds University is that Leeds University wasn't just the biggest college venue in the country for rock bands. Um, it was a big venue full stop. So what this meant was that when the biggest groups of the day were touring, when they came to Leeds, in the tour adverts, when I was a kid, re avidly reading the music papers, it was always Leeds, Leeds University, Leeds University. Look, I didn't really know the reason, but I thought I want to go to a university that always has the top bands. On the first day, something very, very, un I did something very, very uncharacteristic because I was a shy lad. And people find that astonishing now, but it's true. You do change as you go through different stages of your life. But on day one, I went to the Students' Union building and I asked at the Porter's Lodge at the front door where the, the guy was. I'd learned he was a, a student officer who booked an, uh, all the bands and organised all the concerts. And I found this chap who later became a great friend of mine and is to this day called Steve Henderson. And I walked up to Steve's desk looking, honestly, about 12 years old and red as a beetroot with shyness and embarrassment. And from somewhere I summoned the audacity to walk up to his desk and say, excuse me, please, I'm looking for the bloke who books the bands. And he said, eh, that's me. And then I said to him what could, have turn, could turn out to have been the most important thing I ever uttered in my life, which was, when you finish, please, can I have your job? And the short answer was yes. He took me, he didn't say that, that on the day, but he took me under his wing and within a year and a half, I was doing his job. And it was the most incredible thing to be doing when I was 19, 20 years of age. I was running a major venue, very professionally, and a team of 200 volunteer students in all different capacities, caterers, publicists, front stage security. Um, when, I was, when I was that age, it taught me about leadership as much as anything else. Uh, it was just unbelievable, amazing. It was routine for us to have all uh, the big groups of the time. And um, I made sure, you know, I was very, very aware that I was the custodian of um, a, a legacy which had been handed to me, and I was very lucky in that, by people who'd, who'd pioneered and trailblazed this a good decade before me, who put Leeds University on the map as a, as a major venue, later a legendary venue. Uh, like called Simon Brogan, who booked The Who to do Live at Leeds in 1970, booked The Rolling Stones to play in there in March 71 on what was supposed to be their final UK tour before they became tax exiles and went off and recorded Exile on Main Street. Bob Marley and the Whalers played two shows in one night in there, one at five o'clock and one at eight o'clock. And I was very, very aware that, you know, I, had, I was now the guardian of that and I had to keep up some standards. And I think we got away with it. In the spring of 1982, the lineup for that uh, final few weeks before I had to leave and finish was the Pretenders, Rory Gallagher, the Boomtown Rats, Kid Creole and the Coconuts, Black Uhuru, The Clash. Thank you very much, good night. There was a weekend that I'll never forget, which was just before Christmas in 1980. And it was that weekend when all the students were about to go home for Christmas. And it was to almost send them on their way at the end of the uh, autumn term. And the final two gigs uh, of that uh, term, on the Friday night, we did Dire Straits, and on the Saturday night, the night after, we did Ian Jury and the Blockheads. In January 1984, Harry Elizabeth, my sister, put me on a bus at Wellington Street bus station in Leeds. And my last words to her as I got on this coach that early that morning was, I'm going for 10 days, Harry Elizabeth, and if I don't like it, I'm coming back. Well, I ended up saying 26 years. It was very intimidating to come to London after the familiarity of Leeds, of course, and the, the warmth of, of Leeds and all the friends that I got there, and this, I suppose, without being immodest, the reputation I'd made for myself there as well, you know, putting on all the concerts at the university for two and a half years, I was quite a well-known figure. And then to come down here to this vast place and not know it at all, uh, to come down at the invitation of Billy Bragg and his manager, Peter Jenner, to work with Billy, be, Billy's driver, Rody, tour manager, all rolled into one. I mean, it was thrilling in one sense because I felt like Billy and I were on a mission and it was just me and him. It was, it was so easy. It was like a, almost like rock and roll gorillas, a hit and run live attraction. Me, Billy, a battered old Volvo estate car, a couple of electric guitars and an amplifier and a hold all cont containing Billy's ill-fitting clothes. 
And that was about it. It took a few months for me to get accustomed to being here. And then I loved it.